Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video of, um, well, this is another, this is a discussion video, but this is the rebuttal video to, um, basically tell that Runesva, you're wrong, and this is what, how the proper way should do of the ranking of the unit, of the naval units, because there's some topics, there was like some things I agree on, there's some things I don't, uh, that I don't agree on, so I'm going to give my personal opinion in response to Runesva's video, by the way, Runesva, congratulations on 1,000 subscribers, welcome to the 1,000 club, um, we're going to basically rebuttal his opinion and what I personally think. Right now, I have all the units excluding the landing ships because I don't understand why he did the landing ships and, and auxiliary ships, which doesn't make any proper sense. But uh, we're going to be doing um, naval units. So at the beginning, we're going to start. We're going to do all the units in one bunch because I feel like if we just converge into like different tiles, it's just going to take too long. I'm going to be as quick as possible, but yeah, so it doesn't have to be a super long video. So without further ado, let's get on it, and I believe we're going to get going on the battle uh, the aircraft carriers first. So the aircraft carrier, let's see, this is the Akagi. The Akagi, I would personally say it will be in the good, like, it's sort of like in the good category. Like, it's not terrible. Actually, it's not terrible compared to, um, well, no. Eh, let's put it that mediocre, honestly. Because, like, it's not terrible, but, uh, it, it also has really good AA compared to the, um, Kaga, actually, but just put it into the good because it has rocket uh, um, AA as well as um the the um the but as well as the Zui Kaku. So the so the Ka Akagi, I, that's why like sure it has a tall profile and everything like that, but I don't un like I just don't understand why this would um. It's a, it's a, it's like a typical unit, uh, carrier, aircraft carrier, 20 knots. It, it has a very tall profile, but it does go to have decent air A fire compared to the, the Kaga. So, speaking of the Kaga, let's put, where's the Kaga? Where did I put the Kaga? Kaga. Oh, oh there's a the Kaga. Uh, the Kaga, I would say, would have to be mediocre because, like, like I said, it doesn't have as much AA as the Akagi. But, and despite the fact that it's also a very tall profile, it also makes it a lot more, um, it's an easy target for most ships. 20 knots and everything, but it's not, it's not a bad, it's okay. Like, it's, it doesn't, I gotta say, it's an okay vessel. So, let's move on to the next ship. The Bogue, the Bogue class, or, um, or I used to call it the Bunker Hero class when I was a kid, but that was totally wrong. I would say it would honestly be mediocre because it's not like it's supposed to fit as an escort carrier. It's an escort carrier. It has a very low profile. It has pretty bad art, um AA, but it maneuvers quite fast, and with its low profile, it's actually not. It's not as the, of a. It's not as a easy target to take out. So, compared to, like, the other cheap carrier, the, um, Hermes or the Shoho, um, or the Zuiho as, well, this, it's Zuiho class, but not Sho, but they call it the Shoho and BSP, um, it just has some certain advantages that most the other escort carriers do, but that's what my personally, that's what I personally think about it. Alrighty, so we have, what's next on the list, uh... The Hermes class. Uh, I, I'm sorry. It's pretty bad. I agree with Runes on this part. It like it's an escort carrier. It has a low profile, but its anti-air is horrible. It's honestly pretty terrible, and it's like it almost it's almost like has the capability AA of a transport ship. That's the thing, how bad this is. Not only that, the fact that this is a cheap carrier, right? It's supposed to go slightly faster like the Bulg and the Shoho, right? No, this one still goes 20 knots, and yet this is a cheap carrier or an escort carrier. It doesn't make any proper sense. I love the Brit- Like, I gotta admit, I do like love the British um, naval ships, but this, when you're trying to compare it to the Hermes, it's just really difficult to describe how bad it is because like it's like it sets an example of itself good thing we don't play with her much and it was just and you guys can know that it was kind of difficult to sort of escort the Hermes because they're in um uh holding at Ceylon at Ceylon in the long odds mission pack this was like it was really kind of difficult because there's 
it's basically you. You you can't rely on the Hermes to take out aircraft, or else it's kind of screwed. And thank God there there was no bombers coming in Force Z to take it out. Holy crap, that would have been horrible. Uh, that I just don't like the Hermes whatsoever. Um, what's next on the carrier list? The Hear You. The Hear You is actually a pretty good ship. Like it. It's low profile and everything, and has a much more. It has much more better AA compared to the um, Akagi, but it's like it's. But like I said, it has the rocket anti-air, which is kind of devastating when, if it hits an enemy target. So that's why I say like the Hero is pretty good, but it's not as the best because like, it doesn't like, like like I said, the anti-air is pretty worse, like pretty bad, honestly. It's 20 knots. It has a low profile. And it's just really, honestly, like, it's not as, tr like, like, it's just, it just doesn't have anything to excel at. It's just a typical carrier. So there's nothing really much to look after for the jet, for the, um, here you over here. Next on the list would probably be the Lexington class. Uh, Lexington class, uh, I put also in the good category because one thing about the Lexington class is that, like, it's very, um, the Lexington class, it has, it's very, it's much more bigger target, in my opinion, than the, um, Yorktown class. It's really bulky, like, uh, it's really bulky to maneuver and everything like that, and it goes 20 knots and everything, but it doesn't, it has slightly worse anti-air compared to the Yorktown class. And hence why I don't, like, I say, like, the Lexington is, like, the, the older, but yet, um, it's like an obsolete uh, carrier, in my opinion. Oh, sorry. Uh, we don't need to see that. Oh, shoot, no. No! Oh! Sorry about that. You did not see <laughs> to see that. <laughs> that was just one of my subscriptions on YouTube that I watch. But, um, anyways, yeah, the Lexington doesn't really, um, excel in anything, but it's pretty good overall compared to the, uh, Kagi, I mean, the Kaga and the Bogue. Like, I'll take the Lexington class over these two ships, but, like, it's not, it's not, like, terrible, that's all I gotta say. It's not terrible, but it's really good. It's a, It could be a good aircraft carrier, and it can protect itself a lot better than most carriers here on the list. Alright, what's next? Du, 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 going on the line. The Shoho class. Um, hmm, honestly, the Shoho class is pretty... And it's not as terrible as the Hermes, actually. The whole the show whole class, as they call it in Battle Station Pacific, even though it's supposed to be the Zooey whole class, because the Zooey whole class was the lead sh carrier in the in according to um history. Um, they may like that's it's really unrealistic compared to like it's not historically accurate compared to the actual Zooey whole class, because the show whole is actually a lot lower, like it has a lot lower profile and it's actually not as massive as they put them in the game. The like for a cheap carry, it's pretty tall. It's almost like th it's like a mini Kaga Nakagi. Like it's r like that's one thing that's bad about it. Like it could be as great as the bulk if it wasn't and had such a bulky and uh, high profile. And the anti air is not is doesn't excel much, but it it's somewhat like it's a little bit worse, but somewhat at least decent or comparable to the bulk. But the um, the show hole doesn't really excel really much, and but. It can still beats the Hermes because the Hermes is just a god awful carrier, honestly. It's really bad for what it has, but anyways, that's my opinion on the show hole. It deserves to be in the bad, uh, the bad category because um, it's not the best uh, escort carrier in the game or carrier in general. All right, what's next on the list? Do -do -do. Ah, uh, yes, the Soryu class. The Soryu class, it's basically like a Hiryu class. Like, low profile, has pretty good anti-air, and I like it. Like, it's it's a, it can be maneuverable at times. Like, it's 20 knots. It's not as bit massive as, like, the Akagi here, but the Akagi is, like, like, like I said, the only reason why it's up in the good category is because of the rocket anti-air. And the air that makes it a little bit special and have a lot more defenses, but it can't. But um, I, like honestly, that's this is what I like. Like, but anyway, the Soryu class, like it has a good low profile. It's 
fat. It could be well, it's 20 knots, but it can it's maneuverable. It, it has pretty good anti-air, almost similar to the Hear You. It's almost comparable to like the Lexington, except with the lower profile. And it's not like it's honestly not that bad of a ship. I'd rather I would take that. I would take a good um the Sawyer with the Hear You, honestly. The pretty good ships. Alrighty. Uh, let's look at the next category, next ships. Let's find another carrier. N the other carrier. Ah, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, no, your count class. I well, for I'm not sure. I'm not trying to be biased or anything like that, but like personally, I do like the Yorktown class. It's the classic U.S. carrier throughout the Battle Station series. But if we're talking about stats here. It has slightly better anti-air than the um, Lexington. It has a little bit, almost maybe a little bit lower than a profile than the Lexington. Like it's not as bulky. It's not like it has really good anti-air all around the ship as well. It can do some serious damage if for anti-air, but yet yeah, it still has the 20 knots. And like, I just find it a little bit better compare. Like it should be better than most of these ships because it has more anti-air. It's le it may not have the like a lower profile as like the uh, hear you or saw you, but it it it's sort of like improvises, but it's the more anti air and more somewhat more like somewhat better. How you say like it has really good anti air and it really serves well. Like it's maneuverable. It's like an all round like a jack of all trades type of carry. You guys know what I'm trying to say. It's nothing. It doesn't. Ex it's good at everything, but not as like good as like saying like pr like as most ships here. Like everybody's like each carrier is excels at some at one specific thing, but um but they don't but they lack on certain other uh, like topics. However, the your the um Yorktown's basically an all jack of all trades. Like it's it's it doesn't ex like it's pretty good overall in general and I like I would prefer a balanced like carrier than over like an one specific uh advantage of a carrier of the other carriers here. So I got that's why I gotta say that's the Yorktown goes in the excellent category. Alrighty, let's see here. Now Runesford put this at the excellent category. But I'm actually gonna say, um, actually, did he put it in the next in the category or did he put it in the good category? Honestly, I would say overpowered for the Exus Essex class. It has very good anti-air, almost similar profile, maybe slightly lower than the Yorktown over here. It has really good anti-air, especially those um, those uh, dual five-inch dual-purpose guns. Those are p tremendous, and they can be they can do some serious damage do anti-air and they're pretty and I personally like them over the deck guns that the Yorktown has like I said it has a very good anti-air system and one thing that's unique that Roosevelt never actually mentions is that one thing that's unique about the Essex class and during uh, Beast Mod HQ 4.0 and up is that it can catapult fighter planes like you can like in, in case of an emergency like you don't have fighters right away you can launch like a, a good amount of uh, fighter planes from the catapult that's on because realistically there was a catapult system on the Essex class and you gotta hands down the Axis Crusher because this gives the Essex a little bit of more of an advantage over all the other carriers is because like it ha it can defend like it can launch emergency fighters right away when it needed and plus that plus the, the good anti-air it has and i think it ha i think it's actually faster maybe faster than any other carriers but i think it's probably the same speed if not it so like i gotta say like the access class is pretty hands down pretty nice and it's over it's quite um a very it's a very good aircraft carrier Alrighty, and I think we have one more on the list. Ah, uh, yes, the Zuikaku. Like I said, um, like most of these 4.0 ships, this is a pretty uh powerful um carrier. It is like it's basically like the Yamato 1945, but as a carrier form because its anti-air is amazing. Plus, it has the rocket anti-air that the Akagi has, but slightly even better. And it has a low profile. It's very like it's pretty. It's like a really good like all round ship. Maneuverable, pretty good speed, like typical standard speed. A lot of anti air for protection, and it really just wrecks anything in its path. In terms of um, and uh, in terms of against aircraft.
It's also pretty good to defend itself against little small ships, like most, uh, like the Essex over here, it's, and occasionally New York Town. But I personally st say that the Suikaku is is on par with the Essex class, despite the Essex class with the advantage of having catapult fighters. Alrighty, next we're going on to the battleships. We're going down the line here. So let's start. What's the first battleship we have? Uh, da -da -da -da. the Fusil class. I gotta say, the Essex class. I mean, the I mean, the Fusil class is pr is an excellent battleship. It may not excel in the actually no. Honestly, hmm. Um, yeah, let's keep it there. Yeah, the Fuso class battleship is a pretty good, like, all around battleship. It can wreck. Like, the amount of secondaries it has on the artillery is tremendous compared to most battleships here. And I don't. I can't, like, argue because, like, the. Like, the, the battleship is, like, really diff. Like, the battleship is really interesting. It put out a lot of firepower all at once. And it's. It may have the standard speed and everything, but it can. Pop Honestly, I prefer having the Fusil class over like the South Dakota or the North Carolina class or something like that because it has such a ni nice advantage with firepower. It may not excel in anti air, but it does pretty good, like for its job for as a battleship. So that's why I put it in the excellent category. Alrighty. Um. The King George V. Now, I personally think it's a pretty good ship. I honestly don't have any issues with it. I don't see why it's mediocre or lower. Despite the one, like, we're just point out the one major point that he, or point that he, that he used was the batteries. Because there's quad batteries on the, on, like, both through the front and the bow and stern. And it takes out, like, about 40% of the artillery fire. But honestly, like, think of the, ch like, if you guys have ever played the King George V, have you ever gotten a situation where those batteries actually prove fatal or something when you're firing it? I no per personally never seen, like, never uh, got, like, any kind of bad situation where that occurs. Uh, because it's pretty a uh, well armored turret. Um, and I don't, like, it, it's kind of, it's very bulky compared to the Fusil class. Um, but it's, and it has pretty good anti-air, like really good anti-air, but it doesn't really excel as much as firepower when it comes to firepower. Because I personally, like I said, I'll personally go with the Fuso class over a um, King George V class because it's it's more maneuverable. Well, it's more maneuverable. It it has really good firepower, and although it, because the only thing that's there, and that's another thing that the Fuso also has compared to the King George V, the King George V does not have a, a recon plane catapult, and you might need to use that especially in like certain uh, battleship skirmishes, like Second Battle of Guadalcanal or something, or uh, Battle of um. Like I use like Battle of the Santa Cruz. If you guys saw my video on that, I use the recon planes of the South Dakota to actually like I use that a lot, especially trying to locate things. And I it's I find recon planes a lot useful, so that's why I'm putting the Fuso class above the King George V. And the King George V doesn't really can compare to the firepower and excellence of the Fuso class. Moving on, um, the Congo class. Um, I would say it's pretty good. It does actually, honestly, it's a pretty like for a battle cruiser. It's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. It may not have as much firepower as uh. Actually no, let's put it, let's put it good. Actually, I'm sorry. I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think it's that good. But like, the battle, the um, the Congo class is. The Congo class, it's a very immovable ship, I gotta admit. Its firepower is not as much as the Fusil, and it doesn't, and not that, it doesn't have as strong, like, armor and, f as, like, the Fusil does. It doesn't have as much firepower, and also has a similar anti-air, which is pretty lackluster, honestly. But, uh, the only thing that has the main advantage over, like, the, uh, like, let's say, the Renown class, as its a counterpart, is that it has a tremendous speed, was actually... Never mind, they're not close. But like, like I said, it's not. It's for a battle cruiser. It's a really good ship. It's a really good ship, but it doesn't like I would say it would not compare to like the Fuso or any other next ships. Alrighty, 
Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. The Super Yamato. I don't think we we don't have any uh, debate over that. It's a pretty like it's a powerful vessel, honestly. Like you, you would run in in the sight of the Super Yamato. It has tremendous anti-air defense. It's got its main batteries are quite powerful, and they can take on quite a like a nice fleet or gauntlets of smaller ships. Like if you could just send the freaking Super Yamato against the against the blockade of uh, vessels and invasion of Hawaii, she would probably have no problem and she would take them all out, honestly. And she can take out quite a few battles, like let's say like South Dakota or a renowned class. This guy can take a punch. Like the Super Yamato can do quite powerful as much as the, but it wouldn't like, it, it's a pretty, it's a quite overpowered ship. But then again, it, if you're talking about multiplayer wise, command points, it, but then again, it's worth the asking price because it's, it's really overpowered for what it is. Alrighty, next on the list, let's see, do you hear? The Yamato class, it's an excellent battleship, just like the Fusil class. It may not be as powerful as the, um, as the Fusil class, but like, for the price of the, Yama of the Yamato over here, compared to the, f like, it's a power, like, it's a super battleship, crying out loud. It's not as, like, like... I personally like I personally like the fusil and the Yamato, but the only thing that's different about the about the uh, about the Yamato is that like it's not as great as the Super Yamato because like the anti-air is slightly worse and the bang batteries as well, but it also has pretty good speed. It makes up in pretty good speed in all rounds, so I would say the Yamato is a pretty excellent ship. Alrighty, um. And it also has really good armor, like, honestly, that's pretty good. That's pretty good for a uh, super battleship, for, for crying out loud. You can, like, so, similar to, like, the Super Yamato, you can probably take down a bunch of ships and, with this, with just the Yamato here. And it has a very good range advantage over the, over the Fuse over here. Alrighty, what's next? The Bismarck. Honestly, I would say, I would say on the good cat, on the, um... Um, on the good category, it's not as terrible as like, like, like it's not as good as like the Fuso and um, and uh, Yamato class honestly because like the Yamato class, like it has a lot more firepower personally compared to the Bismarck. The Bismarck is almost like the, uh, it's almost like the Congo, but yet it has more anti-air, it's a little more faster, it has not much more armor, but it doesn't, compare to the Fuso, and like, if you go in a 1v1 duel against the Bismarck, um, Fuso, or Yamato, or Super Yamato, you most likely think that, most likely, these three will win over the Bismarck. That's what, like, like, it's a really good ship, it's a German ship, um, I like it, it's really good, but it doesn't really, as quite as, it's not really as good as like um most other ships. Alrighty, next on the list, South Dakota. Um, like I said, South Dakota is um. Hmm, what's what I gonna say? Hold on, let's see. I'm trying to think here, like I'm trying, I'm like, I'm, like I'm just like I'm looking around, like just trying to see, like maybe, like, hmm. So let's put actually honestly compared to. Yeah, let's go South Dakota. Yeah, I'd actually put King George V on mediocre because the King George V doesn't like, like I said, it's not. Yeah, I think now I'm sort of seeing why Runesva is putting it at mediocre, but it's not bad. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's worse at all. But like, I just think it's not doesn't excel as much. But anyway, South Dakota, it's a it can take on a quite a few ships here. It's a very good vessel. Like it's a very good vessel with 20 knots, with excellent anti-air, with dual purpose five inch guns. And, um, and with the main batteries, is also quite devastating towards enemy ships. And it can be quite as powerful. And, like I said, unlike the King George V, it does not have a recon plane, uh, spotter. 
but I this is what I personally believe what is that so most battleships are pretty good honestly like I haven't like have any major issues all right what's the next ship on the list the Montana overpowered <laughs> I don't well honestly compared to Hmm. Honestly, let's put that. Yeah, let's put that. Excellent. It's not overpowered. I would say, honestly. Ah, oh, fuck it. It's it's overpowered. I honestly like. It's a vat. Like the like overall, the Iowa and the New Jersey. I mean, not New Jersey. The Iowa and the Montana class battleships are really good battleships. The only thing that's different from the Iowa is that I mean, f that the Montana is from the Iowa is that it has an extra battery on the stern, and it's it's also quite devastating. It has more armor and it can take on more damage, and it's comparable to the Super Yamato because those are quite massive and powerful ships. Like I said, like the Super Yamato, it can take on many vessels. It can take on many vessels and would not have any. It would not receive a scratch, and it can also like outnumber these guys, these two battleships here, the Fuso and the Yamato. But that's why I personally think that the um uh that the Montana is overpowered and I think it's a really good ship honestly overall in general all right without further ado let's go to the next one Do -do -do -do. Uh, fudge sickles um Iowa class like the Montana it does it's not as great as the Montana but the Mon but the um it does it's almost it's they're very identical the reason why it this is overpowered compared to the Iowa is that it has an extra artillery main artillery battery and it's still like can take on a lot more health this is basically a slightly weaker version of the Montana it has more arm it has good armor comparable to Yamato has very good range on the artillery and it's really honestly overall pretty good and it's a very fast ship for its for what it is and I enjoy the Iowa a lot compared to most battleships here but yeah alrighty should I really have to explain this one it's basically like the Yamato but you have but the batteries can be devastating anti-air and I think it's also more than 20 knots I don't know it can be long but still it is devastating it is very devastating. I don't know how to say. I keep saying this from like over and over, but it's a devastating warship. I don't see why like this vessel is like. It's very comparable to like the Super Yamato, like similar specs and stuff like that. But it can do a lot in damage, and it's quite massive and overpowered. <laughs> and I just this is just a, it's a hor it's like a pretty good ship overall in general. So. Let's what's, what's next up? Uh, the New York class. The reason why I'm putting it in the bad category is because it doesn't really excel in anything, real honestly. Anti air is slightly worse than the King George V, although it also doesn't have the reek. I don't think it has a catapult as well as, and it's a. I feel like th this is what I think personally. I think the New York's just obsolete. It's very obsolete compared to the most warships in Battle Station Pacific now. Um, because they didn't, like, stats-wise, they didn't really, um, the game didn't really, didn't many differences to the, um, uh, to the, like, the, the reason why it's pretty bad, honestly, actually, uh, let's actually put it horrible, honestly, that's the one thing, here's the one issue that, it's slow, it's not, it's kind of bulky, it's, it's really obsolete, that's what basically the, the main issue is. The artillery, the only artillery is its main batteries. You don't have the dual purpose. Like the, the gut deck guns that it has, it's not dual purpose. But then again, it's a quite old ship. But, um, like, it just doesn't really excel much. And it wants to be, like, as good as, like, the other warships. But it's, it's personally, it's really bad, honestly. Like, like New York doesn't have a lot of firepower to give. And this could, honest, I can honestly see a, that's, like I can honestly see a renowned class battleship winning over a um, New York class because the New York class is really lackluster. 
There's nothing much that the New York can do, but that's what it is. And next we have the um the renown. The renown is pretty is not doesn't like despite it has a rec recon catapult, but compared to its counterpart, the Congo class, the voice crack though, the um the Co the renown class, it's honestly really kind of bad. Honestly, like I keep like against the Congo. I personally like the like the Congo a lot better because I, I think it's because of more artillery it has compared to the the Renown. The Renown doesn't really it wants to be like as good as the Congo, but it I just have like I just had a bad history with the Renown. The Renown doesn't excel much. It may have the same speed, but it doesn't give it a lot of firepower. Like the guns on the Renown is pretty weak and lackluster, honestly. And that's why I personally and the Congo feels like it has more armor and it can take on uh, take take deliver more firepower compared to the Renown. But I that's the reason why it's better than the New York is because the New York is like is kind of slow and it doesn't have um uh, secondary ar uh, artillery. And hence why I'm putting it in the bad category. Like I said, it's it's not the best ship in the world. And finally, I believe we have the North Carolina. Just like the South Dakota, it can take on it can take on vessels like it can take a bunch of the Congo class battleships. And the Congo class, I mean the, the North Carolina is almost identical to the um, South Dakota, but I just feel like it has a much more sleek and narrow slat, like a lower profile than like the south dakota but if you get to, if you put the north carolina against like an iowa or a yamato or higher it's probably not gonna win because like it doesn't like i said it's not as great it's but it's a very good ship overall like i would certainly would certainly like destroy the king george v and other vessels lower down in the fleet but personally i just don't think i just don't think the um north carolina had like i just like it's oh like no I personally like the North Carolina because it's like it's good anti-air uh, artillery. It has good anti-air, and I think it's faster. I don't know. It also has recon planes as well, which is a bonus. And I don't know. I just really like the North Carolina. I never had any kind of issues with there, and that's why I personally think it should be comparable to the South Dakota. Alrighty, now we're gonna move on to the cruisers. Alrighty, so the Akano class. Um, hmm, what should I put the Agano class? Honestly, compared to the, um, compared to the other light cruisers in the American side, it's r mediocre, honestly. The artillery, I love the artillery batteries. Like, it's pretty good, honestly, in my opinion. It has torpedoes, which is nice, but the anti-air is what really lacks, like, r really, um... Uh, makes it bad is because the anti-air is horrible compared to the um, other other uh, cruisers in the U.S. fleet or in the Japanese fleet. Heck, this is probably the best. I would choose the. Then again, I would choose the Agano over the Kuma, honestly, because it has the. I think it has better. Yeah, it has better range than the Kuma class, and it has a really good. Like it's ver It has torpedoes and everything. It's just. A s it just doesn't like like if you compare it to like the Cleveland or Brooklyn class. Uh, I knew I forgot about something. I forgot about the Brooklyn. Uh, give me one. Ah, uh, shoot. All right, and we're back. So, anyways, uh, about the Agano class, it doesn't like the artillery is okay. It's pretty good for a light cruiser, but like like I said, it lacks our secondary artillery, and it doesn't like and the anti-air is also pretty lackluster, honestly. So, and hence why it's in the mediocre category but like that's that's personally why my opinion about the as a crew as a light cruiser doesn't really do so well but it's okay it's average so did i put her music go back in the dumpster fire you go and did i put another one in the dumpster fire oh crap then you know no. new york where's the new york new york new york where are you there you are I'm trying to make sure everybody's all here uh yeah i think we're good we're good we're good but honestly um like yeah that's my opinion about the agano class next on the cruiser list the alaska class 
personally, I really like that line, the Alaska class, but I don't c classify it as overpowered though. Like just like the um I, the um the Alaska class, it's pr like unlike most ships here, unlike most uh, heavy cruisers, actually, honestly, comp it has se like most on most uh, excellent cruisers here on the Alaska. Like the Alaska has secondary batteries as a heavy cruiser. I think that's the only heavy cruiser I believe bes that has secondary uh, artillery. Hence why it's pretty good and pretty powerful, honestly. And it can do some devastating damage. It's almost like a battleship, but it's, I wouldn't consider it as overpowered as a battleship. Like I don't. The reason why I don't think it's overpowered is because like. It's still kind of. I think it's somewhat slower than the um. Like it's it's a lot more. It's actually no. It's bulky. It's almost like a battleship. It's very bulky and so it's an easy target to aim. The artillery doesn't is tremendous, but like it doesn't do as much. The anti-air is not the best, but it's good. And I, that's why the, the but it's overall it's but in general it's a very great ship honestly for as it is so anyways but yeah that's my personal opinion that Alaska class takes the excellent category it's just not as, as it's not overpowered in my opinion all right the Atlanta class this might be controversial but um personally uh mediocre I would say it's a good. It's honestly for a light cruiser, it's pretty good. For it's a pretty good uh, light cruiser that it's tremendous in anti-air, and as a light cruiser itself, like with dual purpose and everything, with the artillery, it may not be like as like cru like the cr typical cruiser range or damage or something like that, but it can still like rip ships to shreds, even destroyers for sure. And it can still do some damage to cruisers. Like, I personally, like, the Atlanta class, not to mention, it now has torpedoes. It's the only, vet now, since since 4.0, it's the only U.S. ship that has torpedoes. Hence why it has a lot, like, a lot more advantages compared to the other, to other ships. But, that's why I like the, like, the Atlanta class. The Atlanta class is not, is not really, is... Really good ship overall as, as for light cruiser. It can do some serious damage despite the fact it doesn't have the proper ranges like a Cleveland class or something like that. Um, let's see. Next one is the Cleveland class. Excellent. It's a very good overall light cruiser for the um for the uh, for what it is because the light cru like the can like the main batteries plus the secondaries is quite powerful as a light cruiser, almost comparable to say like a, a Northampton class for crying out loud. But like, it's a very good vessel overall, and it's very maneuverable for sure. And despite it's slightly, it's not as like it's, it has decent a decent profile. It's a very good ship overall. Its anti air is great. Like it can take down a lot of vessels now, do you, and it can also launch recon planes as well, which is also really nice for the Cleveland class. And it can do it, it's almost like a pocket heavy cruiser, honestly. I personally like this the uh, Cleveland class cruiser over the Northampton. And we'll get, and I'll talk about more about the Northampton in the next one, but yeah, Cleveland, it's it's definitely a very good vessel, alrighty. Next on the list for the the Reuter. Uh, it's really controversial, but the, I'm gonna put it in the medi uh, mediocre. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the mediocre category because the one thing I don't like, like the 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 Reuter is a really good vessel. I do have to admit, but it lacks torpedoes for one thing. For one thing, and um. It, and it's anti-air is all located at the back of the ship and they're not even f flagged it doesn't have any flag so it's but it's person but it's not that bad honestly it can actually tear some planes but not as much but it can easily get overrun with planes if it ever comes down to it and like the Deroyer it's, it's batteries it's main batteries are pretty good they're almost comparable to the Agano and so that's why I'm putting it in the mediocre category it also can launch recon planes I believe which is not, which is pretty good. Um, it doesn't, yeah, but yeah, it doesn't like slide, like excel, but it has terrible, uh, it has pretty bad um, anti-air compared to like the Agano, and 
compared to like let's say like the Cleveland or Brooklyn, it doesn't like it doesn't um give it doesn't give a lot like it doesn't give a lot basically it doesn't it doesn't uh, give what it's um offered as a light cruiser, and hence why it's at mediocre. Okay, um, let's see in the next. Who's next? The Kuma. It's pretty. I'm sorry. It's kind of bad. It's really bad, honestly. I don't like the Kuma at all. <laughs> like, it's anti. Actually, no. It's put in the bad category. It's not horrible. It's not a horrible. It's bad. It's just that like they. I, it has smaller caliber guns, and it has it has a lot less range and everything for its guns, honestly. And it doesn't do as much damage as like say the Agano. I like I like I said I would choose an Agano over a Kumo torpedo, um, Kumo torpedo, uh, Kuma class cruiser because, like I'm not sure this is gonna be controversial. Like it doesn't like like I said it has terrible anti air. I gotta mention it's like horrible. It, that's why that's why I was being so lean. That's why I was being like I wasn't really sure if I wanted to put it in a horrible category because that's the thing because it's it's anti-air is really bad. I don't want it to be in a convoy on, at all when it comes to um like air raids and stuff like that because this thing cannot defend for the life of its uh, of this ship. It has torpedoes, which is nice, but not as much as torpedoes. You'd say like I think not. Yeah, it's not as much as the Agano or um, any other ship. Hence why the uh, um, the Kuma is at the bottom. Alrighty. Next we have uh, what's next in the cruiser? The Northampton. This is really controversial as well because, like, uh, personally, I would so honestly say that the uh, it's kind of medio mediocre, honestly. For a heavy cruiser, it lacks a lot. Like honestly, it's pr it has a very tall profile. It doesn't have any torpedoes whatsoever, and it only has its main batteries. It's it only and it's only three main batteries. That's the thing. Only three main batter ma main batteries, but it's like it just doesn't really excel. Like it doesn't compared to the Japanese cruisers. It doesn't like it's really bulky and it's really un r bad to maneuver. It can do like the cans are good. Like I gotta admit, the big batteries are pretty good. But when it comes to anti-air and like the damage per minute or so like damage per second or something, out like it's just really lackluster compare. And that's another thing. If we're going to ruins the subject about like main batteries, like if you take one of these swords out, that's one third of your firepower right there. And that's something about this cruiser that this doesn't really. It's not as really good. Like I would say that like that's why that Alaska is so much better is because like it can do a lot more firepower. It's dual has secondary batteries that are dual purpose. It has recon planes. Then again, the the, the North Canton has recon planes, but despite him, they both have be have tall. They both might have taller prof like same profiles or something like that. But I can rely on Alaska a lot more than the Northampton. Hence why I'm putting it in the New Yorker category. The Mogami class cruiser. Uh, I would say it's a pretty good ship. It's honestly like, it's not as like. F mm, how do I say this? The Mogami class is not like. Actually, what's putting? The, yeah, the Mogami class is a really good heavy cruiser. I personally like it because it, it's its batteries are nice, evenly placed. It has slightly more. I think it has more batteries than them. Like in terms of cannons or barrels than the Northampton, it's a lot. It's a lower profile. It has pretty good anti-air. Like it's it's decent, I guess you can say. And but it's really like overall, and it also has torpedoes. That's the one thing. It's very maneuverable. It's very. It's has a lower profile, better get uh, artillery dis uh, in, uh, placement, and it's just really good overall. All right, the Takao class, same, same thing like the Mogami. It's basically like the Mogami, but I think I feel like it has more armor. Honestly, actually, mm, 
Yeah, let's just keep it as it is. Uh, the Takao class, it's basically like a Mogami, but I feel like it has slightly more armor on, maybe? I don't know. Or maybe they're about the same. They have torpedoes. It has, it can be, like, I would take a Takao class over Northampton any day. And I, that's one thing that I like about this vessel over the, um, Northampton is that, like, they, they're a lot more fast, maneuverable, lower profile, and everything else. Like, just like the Mogami. The Tone class. I'm putting it as good, actually. It's not as bad. The only thing that really lacks... Like, I wouldn't say it would be horrible compared... Like, it would be as horrible as the Northampton class. Because the Northampton... Honestly, I would take the Tone class over Northampton class, personally. Because despite the batteries all located at the bow of the ship... It, like, it, it can launch more recon planes, like, four at once, and they are good for submarines. Like, the Tone class are basically... And that's one thing that's diff that's nice about the Tone. It's unique because it has sonar, like the destroyers have, to detect ships. And it can carry more recon planes and will launch more at, at once in a year. It can take out... It's a very good submarine hunter. I would take this ship as, a summer, as an ASW uh, type ship. And it has a lot, I feel like it has more firepower compared to the Northampton. And I just like it overall. It's like, it's not that bad of a ship. As long as you just don't have the ship get behind with enemy ships, then it should be, a, it's an all right cruiser. Like, I, I wouldn't say it's bad. I wouldn't say it's mediocre. I wouldn't say it was horrible. It's pretty good, honestly, in my opinion. Hence, but if you come, when it comes to Battle of the Java of the Sea, oh god. Battle of the Java Sea on the Battle Station Midway. Oh boy, that was that was something. All right, the Kuma Torpedo Cruiser. It's really like this is also very controversial. It has terrible anti-air, and the artillery is not as bad. But it's, yeah, f screw it. We're putting in good because. It's that's the one thing. It's mean what the reason why it's in good and not mediocre, or even lower than the Kuma, the Kuma class is because like the Kuma class, um, like the Kuma, like the Kuma torpedo it has a f f ton of torpedoes. No matter what, if you just use these torpedoes, you can spray and, and most likely at least a quite a few of these will hit your target. They are quite devastating. When they get close to you, they may have weak ar weak um ar um armor compared to the Kuma. Artillery is not that bad, but personally, it's actually quite devastating. Although it's re it's very weak against anti-air, so it's very devastating. I personally uh, I don't play with it around, but when I play it around, I usually rely on the torpedoes, and that's the only thing that really excels, and that's why it's in a good category is because the torpedoes are amazing in this one but anyways the kuma torpedo goes in the good category alrighty next on the list we have the york class personally I like the york class over the Northampton class Re here's my reasons why despite it has one less barrel it's quite it has the same almost the same amount of damage with artillery batteries it is three of them Oh no, they might it might have like less like batteries, but like it also has torpedoes and has slightly banter and it has a similar profile as like the Northampton class, but the York class really sort of shines there. Hold on. Hmm. Honestly, how hold on, let's actually switch it around, honestly, because I like I'm just thinking about it like I think the Northampton class is actually pretty good, honestly. It's not mediocre, but I personally, like, your class, that's an actually one thing now. And as I think of it now, it's not like, I was picturing it the wrong way. The York class, the best play has more torpedoes and has pretty good anti-air compared to the Northampton class. But it doesn't deliver as much firepower as the Northampton class. Hence why the Northampton class is going into the good category instead of the York class going in, now going into the mediocre category. Next on the list is the Prinzugin or the Emerald Hipper class. It's pretty powerful, I gotta say. For CA, it's pretty powerful. It has torpedoes. It does. It has good um batteries and everything like that. But it's not as great as the um as the Mogami or Takao class. Hence why I'm keeping it in the good category. Because honestly, the firepower it's really good. I have to admit, it's really good firepower. 
but the one thing that really lacks compared to the Mogami and the um, the one thing that's why you're not as in the excellent categories because the fact that um, that it doesn't have as much like main batteries as like the Japanese cruisers there. Hence why the Admiral Hipper, I personally like it because it has nice armor. It's, it's a good jack, uh, jack of all trades type of heavy cruiser. Hence why I'm putting it in the good category. And I believe and we ha next we had the we had the Mogami refit here. Like the, this is like the Mogami 1937 here. Um, I'm not sure if you guys may not have known this ship, but this has also been in the unlocks and everything. It's basically like a Mogami, but have more battery rolls and everything. So, hence why it's in also in an excellent category because it has more barrels, like more firepower. Honestly, it delivers more firepower. I don't know it's a light. It's a. I think it's classified as a light cruiser. I think for a light cruiser, it's pretty good. Honestly. Compared to, like, if you're comparing it to the Agano, the Kuma, or the Kuma Torpedo class, this light cruiser of the Mugami is really, like, devastating as a light cruiser. Like, it has more firepower. It can, like, it, can, it has torpedoes which can take out, which can decimate those ships. And it has pretty good anti-air. It has, it has the benefits of the Mugami heavy cruiser version, but... It also, but it also has good benefits from the like as a light cruiser. But that's why I'm putting it in the excellent category as it's a great light cruiser overall in general. All right, we're just actually let's just do the little destroyer. I don't know why I had the PT boats here, but honestly, I don't like any of them. I think I like the hold on, echo PT boats. They're pretty bad, honestly. Like, I can't get anywhere close with these things. The torpedo, like, they're really weak overall and stuff. The only thing I like about the that's why the, gear, the Japanese boat is better than the um, Alco PT boat is that um, it has artillery and it can do somewhat good damage. And hence why I'm putting the um, the Alco PT boat in the bottom category because it's really kind of useless. Both PT boats kind of useless, but anyways. Oh, yeah, Brooklyn class. We forgot the Brooklyn class. The Brooklyn class, um, I would say personally, it's not as good as the Cleveland, honestly. It doesn't have as much firepower as the Cleveland, so it's, I'm going to say it's in the good category. Not, It's not, it's like, it doesn't fill this spot like the bigger brother of the, uh, the Cleveland class, but like the Brooklyn, it's almost like a Cleveland, but with, um, less anti air. And less secondaries, hence why I'm putting in the good category. It's a pretty good ship overall, but it's not as good as like a Cleveland. Okay, now moving on to the destroyers. Actually, you want to do? I wonder if I, I want to do. Let's do some Marines first, honestly. The Gato class. I like the Gato class. Goes in the excellent category because it has a lot. Be it has better. Art um, it has more. Art uh, I rely a lot on the artillery as well, and it's pretty good overall. The torpedo, it has a nice balance of forward and back torpedoes. And despite the, the fact that it doesn't launch recon planes, but it is still quite a powerful submarine in general. Hence why I'm putting it in the excellent category of the submarines. Now the I-400. I'll put the I-400 in the excellent category. Despite it doesn't have any stern torpedoes, it's still quite powerful, with, especially with the recon plane. That's one thing about the recon plane is that... The recon plane can, um, like, spot aircraft, like, spot units and everything. And they can actually use it to take out some, um, cargo ships. And they can, I think they actually use bombs, I think, in full point all now. And it get, it's like a tank. It's almost like a little bit of a tank because it can take more damage, honestly. It can take more damage than most other ships. Hence why I believe the I-400 is really good compared to, like, the Type B or the Titan carrier. But, um... That's why I'm putting the I-400 in the excellent category, but it's not overpowered. I wouldn't say it, not 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 even close for overpowered. The Kitan, the Kitan, um, uh, freaking, uh, <laughs> like the, the Kitan carrier. Um, this would have been in the excellent category as as with the I-400. It's just that the the, the Kitans themselves, they're really bad at trying to aim for your uh, target. 
Like, especially if they're moving like a destroyer, you can't really rely on them as much as like it, you might as well just use regular torpedoes because the chitin carry doesn't really provide as, like the chitin the chitons themselves. They don't they may do damage, but like when's what are the odds for them to actually hit their target, especially against um ASW Fletchers? It's really like they're really weak overall. Hence why I'm gonna put the chitons right now. The chitons in the bad category because. They literally are just there to be kamikaze boats or kamikaze submarines, and that's why chitons are in the bot and the bad category. Alrighty, um, next submarine, the Narwhal class. It's a really good submarine. I gotta admit, it's a pretty good submarine, almost like the Gato but with less torpedoes, and. It Everything else is the same, it's just that it has less torpedoes. And that's why the, it's not as great as the Gato class, but it's pretty good on overall in general. And that's not that much to say there about the about the Narwhal class. Alrighty. Next on the list, we have the Type B. I, I can see it, like, it could be useful for stealth, but really, like... It's almost like a submarine, but war like firepower wise. Like, if you're trying to do this like in multiplayer or something like that, you would you rather want a a small submarine that can only launch two, two torpedoes at once on a stern, or would you rather like have it like at the freaking um? Like, it's it could be like if it had like some sort of ability where it can like be detected a lot less, like a lot um like it could be detected a lot um. Like it's good to like if it would have hide like had less uh, detectability range or something like that with, because it acts like a normal submarine. It doesn't have the type, the um. It just has less torpedoes and literally that's it. It's weak and as hell. So the like the like if this if they had like a little benefit of like stealth like where it can have like it can be undetectable or almost rare, had they had to be right up close with these submarines to something like that like some sort of benefit then maybe it would have been a very good a very good submarine but hence why it's in the bad category Alrighty. next on the list is the the uh no what no, it's the type B mediocre honestly Despite it has weak complaints, the anti-air is horrible for a submarine. Like, it's, it's pretty bad. And that's another thing. But the i400, it has really good anti-air for a submarine. And hence why it only has one artillery. And although it can launch recon planes, but it's not as good as, like, as a, an i400 or a narwhal or a chitin carrier. I'd rather use the chitons more than the recon plane version or the type B. Re the regular type B. So, hence why I'm putting it in the mediocre category. The U boat. The spider has. I like that it has. Um, like, if it would have had. Um, maybe uh, a little bit more torpedo tubes, it would have probably been in a good category or maybe have recon planes. That's one thing I. Like, this one has. That's one thing about the uh, U boat. It may have one stern. Actually, hold on. Um, that's actually pretty bad. It's actually kind of bad, honestly. Yeah, let's move that right here. Door, yeah. Type A submarine really useless. Uh, they don't do much firepower. But the U-boat, why the U-boat's bad? Is because it ha doesn't have a lot of torpedo tubes compared to the Type B or anyone in general. It only has the deck gun. There's no anti-air whatsoever on this thing. Although it has one torpedo tube at the back, like, it doesn't provide as much damage as, like, say, like, a Type B or a Titan Carrier or an I-400 or a Narwhal or a Gato or, Ga or Gato or whatever you call them. Uh, but hence why I'm putting it at the, um, putting it at the uh, bad category. Next on the list, actually, oh, we've got the uh, Shino boats. They're useless. Shino boats are useless. They, although they may be kamikaze boats, but they're kind of useless. I'd rather use a chitin instead of an actual, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, Shino boat. But they're kind of useless in game. All right, now we're finally we going to the destroyers. Akazuki class. I would personally say it's an excellent d destroyer, in my opinion. It's with its four, um. 
uh, 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 artillery batteries. It is quite powerful as a destroyer. It can do a lot of damage per minute with its, which is quick, uh, with, uh, with its quick reload. And it, despite it has less torpedoes, but I tend to use, like, it, it just could be very good in anti-air purposes. It may be not as, like, for a destroyer, it's not as good. Like, it may not be as, like, as good as, like, the Atlant, like, as a, like, it's almost, and also can do pretty much good damage. Like, it can take on more hits than the Fubuki or the Shimikaze or the Minikaze. But it can, it's overall a really good ship, in my opinion. And it's despite it only has one torpedo tube, it still does pretty good for as a ship. It's as a ship right now, as a destroyer, it's really good. Um, and it's it's a lot more. I feel like it's more armored, and it can take on more stuff. And I like the firepower it gives. Hence why in I like it's, uh, excellent category, the ASW Fletchers. Personally, I would say. For its purpose of anti-submarine warfare, yes, let's put them in the good category. It's not mediocre. I'm not gonna say it's mediocre because it has one purpose of serving as anti. Like we kind of think, like we're not thinking of it as the destroyer itself. We're thinking about its actual purpose and stuff. That's why the Tone is actually a good in the good category. The Flet the ASW Fletcher, um, it, it's like I said, it's tremendous. It's very good at its um. At his job at anti submarine combat, it can take out any kind of submarine with no problem with its uh, hedgehog launcher. And it also delivers some, it also delivers good firepower as like a Fletcher, it just has one less artillery battery. And personally, I rather take, I like the ASW like that, but um, it's very good as it's what for what it's, it's served to be. Now, I re may not use it as much because it's not, it's kind of rare. To have the use, like, if, like, the reason, like, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt because, like, you were thinking about it because the only thing that's my, many people don't like is because, like, it does, like, when are you going to encounter where you're going to need the these uh, ASW Fletchers? People probably want to use another, the, the unlockables, like, um, AS, uh, the Allen N because it might serve a better purpose or something like that. But, but if, because the, that's one thing about that makes everybody hate the ASW Fletchers because it only serves one specific purpose, and that purpose is kind of rare occasions. Hence why it's in the good category, again, as a, as a good anti-submarine destroyer. The cleansing class. It's I wouldn't say it's horrible, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's horrible because I mean it's pretty bad because it's really weak for a destroyer. Then most generals are kind of weak, but the artillery is a bit lackluster. It does it, the torpedoes are okay, but it doesn't have as much as like a um, typical destroyer. I don't know. I just don't like the Clemson class in general. It anti-air is even worse, and I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't provide a lot. Let's just say that it doesn't provide a lot of firepower for a destroyer. Hence, why it's putting in the bad category. Next, the Fletcher. I gotta admit, the Fletcher is a really good, amazing vessel or destroyer. It's not good. It's not good, but it's excellent because it's like I said, jack of all trades. It's almost like it's basically like the um. Actually, mm, I'm like having second guesses here. Like if I'm trying to compare it to the Allen M. Let's put let's put a mom um, in the good category actually. It's good because it has good artillery, it has good torpedoes, and it's good depth charges and everything. The only issue is that, it, like, if you compare it to the LNM, it's basically a slightly worse version of the LNM, and that's why it's not as good as like. And plus, I believe the dual purpose ones on the LNM are slightly faster when reloading. Hence, why I'm putting the um, Fletcher class in the good category. It's good, but it's not terrible it's so the fubuki class i gotta say it's also in the good category because it doesn't like i said it serves its purpose has very good our torpedoes a lot of torpedoes honestly um 
it's anti-air is pretty good as well. The only main it, like there's nothing many issues like there's not like it doesn't excel compared to Akazuki honestly, but it's pretty good honest per for its job. It's a nice jack of all trades honestly. The Minikaze class. I don't know like I know that these guys are supposed to be identical, but I just feel like the Minikaze is slightly better than the Clemson class. Maybe it's because of its low profile, and the that like, it has similar armament, but like and stuff like that, but. Like, I don't know, I just feel like the Minikaze has a lot more purpose, like, it's just faster, more nimble, more smaller, so than the Clemson, and I personally like the Minikaze over the Clemson, that's why it's, but it's not as good as, like, the other destroyers here, and that's why I gotta say, like, the Clemson's going at the, is lower than the Minikaze. Shimakaze. This is quite overpowered, honestly. <laughs> Actually, if we're gonna compare it right now, let's put the Fubuki because it's pretty good, honestly. It's overall good ship here. But, um, the, minute, the reason why the Shimakaze is Karapo, it's basically like a, a, um, it's basically a Fubuki class, but with a lower profile, slightly, and it carries 15 torpedoes. It's very devastating. It's, it's almost, this is what, this is what the freaking, um, Kumo Torpedo B. Like, I'd rather use the Kumo, I mean, the Shimakaze class than the Takuma Torpedo because you get more out of it with the uh, Shimakaze. Not to mention, what's interesting about the Shimakaze is that it has five, it's faster than any other fe uh, destroyer. Well, maybe the Lupus class, but like, it's very devastating. <laughs> and, it, like, it's. It's really a uh, certain ship to not to not. Uh, it's a very force to be reckoned with, and it's a very overpowered destroyer, and, and that's why everybody loves this thing. This thing, most likely, everybody would agree that this is overpowered. <laughs> so, anyways, let's move on to the Allen M. The Allen M. It's an excellent destroyer. The only reason why it's not like that's the thing. I really like, good. The good like the Fletcher is is on par. With the Allen M, but if you're trying to compare it to, the, but the Allen M is just slightly better because it has more batteries and it has more, and it, the batteries are the damage per second is a lot better than the just slightly better than the um Fletcher class. Hence why it's in the excellent category. The Porter class, the, the thing, is this the Porter class or is this the Porter? This is the Porter class. Um, I would say it's pretty good. Nothing like it is nothing to be. There's, no, there's nothing to be like to be said here. It's a it's a weird version of the Fletcher class, actually. Let's put a mediocre. It's the point. That's the one thing about the Porter class. It may be better. Like it's a lot better than the Clemson class for sure. Don't get me wrong with there. It's just that it's just wants. It just doesn't have like delivers much fire. Like I personally would have rather have the Fletcher with its batteries that set up like that. And the Porter is basically like an LNM Sumner, but with one less battery. Honestly, and I just don't see the point of it. Like that's why it's me. Like I'd rather take a Clem a Fletcher class because it has the Fletcher class is basically the same thing. It's just that the dual the purpose of this uh, the pl the gun placement is a lot better, and it's not like bunched up. That's why I'm putting this this uh, ship on. Like it doesn't like that's what I say. It doesn't really like. It's not as good as a Fletcher, I just gotta say. It's like a, re a weird verge, but I would take that this ship over a Clemson class for the The Lupus class. This vessel... I would say it's pretty good. Honestly, it's good because it wants to be a Shimakaze class. Don't get me wrong. It has the same speed and stuff like that, I think. It wants to be a Shimakaze class. But the Lupus class... Like it doesn't it lacks artillery. The anti-air is okay. Like it's almost similar to the. It's basically like a Fletcher, but with a fuck ton of torpedoes and less artillery. <laughs> Sorry for the language there, but I just gotta say that's why that's why it's like almost like the Akuma torpedo. That's why it's like it's not as bad. Like i I'd rather like I'll use this boat over like a Porter class, honestly. Actually, hold on. 
That's actually pretty mediocre. <laughs> now I think of it, I keep like second guessing myself. Like I don't have like an actual layout of this, but like the uh, mediocre mediocre class, uh, like it's mediocre because, yeah, the artillery, despite it has, it wants to be a Shimakaze class. Don't get me wrong. Its torpedoes are devastating if you use it. But have you ever actually seen people who actually use this thing, compared to other ships? Like no, nobody really uses this thing overall in like missions and stuff like that. I don't. The only reason I use the um the uh, freaking um Lopez class in the f in hunt for the cruiser in the long arms mission packs because it's useful for the situation against a cruiser. It's very useful and it can be. It's just that like when it comes to dis like if you're doing destroyer combat. I'd rather use artillery than the actual torpedoes to fight a destroyer. And you compare it to destroyers, it's not as, like, it doesn't really excel much. It, that's why, hence why it's in the mediocre category. Anyways, guys, that is my list of all the vessels here. I hope you get, I'm not sure if you guys would agree with me. This is my, well, my personal opinion of the tier list here. Of all the, all the naval units, excluding the landing ships, because I don't see any point with that. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you guys want to have like opinions about it, leave in the comments below and talk about what you guys personally personally think. And I will be happy to talk to all you guys and prove why um it's um good to mint most shows and stuff like that. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys do, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys then, everybody. Bye bye.